Uh, Mark Riley from the Seven Network. Prime Minister, I'm always asking you about you, so I wanted to ask you about us. Um, um, let's talk about you for a while, Yeah, let's Mark. talk about me. Um, <laughs> me and my friends here. Um, I think uh, a few of us have been reflecting on this in the last few weeks and certainly in the last couple of days um, uh, very sharply on our responsibilities. Um, when we see a gentleman in Gladstone uh, trying to uh, uh, encourage people to take up arms against the government, um, a woman in Melbourne being shoved out of a public meeting and harassed down the street to tears, uh, uh, you confronted in um, a shopping centre by people screaming and Liberal Party members calling you a liar, and then a radio station coming here and broadcasting all day in the first uh, day back of Parliament to whip climate change uh, opposers into a frenzy. Um, how do you see our responsibility and, uh, and the way that we should be reporting this matter? Yeah. I think we will have a long debate about media ethics in this country, but uh, if I could put it as clearly as um, I can, I'd say to you, don't write crap, don't write crap, don't write crap, don't write crap. Um, can't, <laughs> can't be that hard. Um, and uh, when you have written complete crap, then I think you should, uh, I think you should correct it. Uh, so I'd like to see as many column inches confirming that there's no 6.5 cent a litre charge on petrol as I saw reporting Tony Abbott's claims that there would be. I'd like to see as many column inches and minutes on the TV news reporting that the future of the coal industry is bright and strong as verified by a huge coal company like Peabody's as I saw coverage of Tony Abbott standing in a Peabody's mine saying the coal industry was going to close down. I'd like to see as many minutes of coverage and column inches uh, on the steel industry and the work we've done with the steel industry so they are uh, satisfied with the arrangements that, that we've made about carbon pricing. I'm not saying they're not under pressure. They're under pressure because of the global economic winds we were just talking about, but they are satisfied about carbon pricing. I'd like to see as much time devoted to that as was devoted to Tony Abbott's claims when he stood next to steel workers that Wyala was going to be wiped off the map. And there's a new one today. Uh, we've had uh, Nystar. Uh, they're involved, of course, in making zinc. Uh, they've put out a statement that says the impact of this tax is not considered to be material to Nystar. This is a, against a Tony Abbott claim. If we have a carbon tax, that smelter closes down. Well, I think the Nystar accuracy needs to get as much exposure as the false claim did. And if we saw some of that, some accuracy and facts out there, I think what I had the opportunity to do at the community forum in, in Brisbane last night, uh, and I don't mind taking criticism on the chin, that's part of my job, uh, but when I was there talking to people about the facts and talking to people afterwards more casually, you could see, once they got that information, the sense of reassurance it gave them. And it changed a lot of minds. Now, you would say it's not your job to change minds about a government policy, and that's true. But I think it is your job to get information to people that's accurate and rigorous. Uh, some of the crazier claims we've seen in this debate need to be put to one side. Don't write crap. Don't write crap. Don't write crap.